Well, we're only one week into the 2022 NASCAR season, and we've already got two accidents that could go down as some of the worst wrecks during this 2022 season. And one of those we'll be discussing in just a moment with Myatt Snyder and how his car was able to go airborne and into the catch fence hitting uh, from both the front and the rear of the car. And then we'll be talking a little later on about how Harrison Burton was able to manage to flip his number 21 Wood Brothers machine in the first flip with the new next-gen car. So the first wreck we're going to be looking at is Myatt Snyder. Now this was in the first Xfinity race of the season at Daytona in, a, in an unbelievable wreck where it resembles somewhat of Tony Stewart flipping down the backstretch in Daytona in 2001. And then with the way the car hit the catch fence, it was reminiscent of Kyle Larson hitting it because if you go back to that incident, both the front and the rear of the car was gone. The engine was completely ripped out of it. And this was in a similar fashion almost a decade later, this time in the incident of Myatt Snyder in Jordan Anderson Racing's number 31 car. So one thing we're going to be looking at is how exactly the car is able to get up off the ground. Now, if you remember from earlier in the day, and we got two examples of this courtesy of Drew Dollar, uh, once in the Arca race and then one in the actual Xfinity race where he got turned or lost control of his car and hit the outside wall, you could see the rear tires get up off the ground because of how hard the impact is with the outside wall. Now, this did play into a factor with how the 31 of Mayan Snyder was able to go upside down. There's a couple key components that makes this flip possible because if a car just spins out on its own, it's not going to get in the air. It's going to need help uh, getting uh, clearance off the ground, if you will. So Mayan Snyder just gets a bad push from Anthony Alfredo into the 27 car and into Jade Buford and then the rest is history as the 31 flies into the catch fence. Now we're going to be taking a look at an alternate angle to show exactly how this wreck was able to occur. So, as we mentioned, had two cars in the pack that made contact with the 31 before it went up and into the catch fencing. And that was the 27 of Jeb Burton. I might have said Harrison Burton on accident, but the 27 of Jeb Burton and the 48 of Jade Buford made contact with Myatt Snyder. Uh, that caused this car to go up in the air. Now, as we saw with Drew Dollar, because of how hard the car hits the wall and the momentum that it gives it, the rear tires are going to get off the ground. Now, in order to have a car actually go up in the air, you're going to need another car hitting it at just the right angle that's going to allow the car to have air go underneath it and pick it up like it's a piece of paper. And so we see that with Jeb Burton hitting the car right in the rear and by the way none of this happens if the 31 car clips justin allgaier if allgaier gets clipped then none of this uh none of this wreck uh happens we don't see the 31 go in the catch fence we might not see any car go in the air and it's probably going to be a bigger wreck but that's the what if so the 31 gets a bad push from the 23 into the side of the 27 of jeb burton now he hits it at the rear of the car at the perfect angle. Now when Myatt Snyder hits the wall, because he's still getting hit by the 27 of Jeb Burton, that car is able to pick itself off the ground. And because of Jade Buford's forward momentum pushing that 31 car, it allows the air to get underneath the 31 and kind of pick it up like a piece of paper. So Jeb Burton hits the 31 car as it's hitting the wall and because of the forward momentum that's being carried by the 31 the roof laps don't really have enough time to deploy because while Myatt Snyder is in the wall and getting hit by Jeb Burton simultaneously and air is getting underneath the car the 48 of Jade Buford is going to push that 31 forward creating more air to get underneath the car with the roof laps basically doing all they can do but at the same time not really doing much and then that's when we see just the uh the air take it take it from here it's just a violent wreck an unbelievable wreck by the way not really sure how my Snyder was able to climb out within 30 seconds of hitting that catch fence or within 30 seconds of that car coming to a complete stop it is unreal to see just how far safety has come into nascar and that is what led to Myatt Snyder going upside down. Now we'll go over and transition into Harrison Burton's wreck. 
So Harrison Burton, he was the first driver in the NASCAR Cup Series to find out what it's like to be upside down in the next-gen car. Now, this one is a very interesting one because unlike my Snyder's incident, this one is a bit odd because it didn't seem like he was going that fast at all. And from the live feed, we really couldn't see much of that car going off the ground. And the roof laps do deploy, but somehow that car is still able to get upside down in a very weird fashion because i've never seen a car just go completely on its roof and then flip back over typically we see it do a barrel roll but it went upside down but didn't do a complete flip like a complete barrel roll. after the car was upside down and got a little bit of a push from the 48 of alex bowman making contact with it it wanted to go into a barrel roll but it bounced on the right side of the tires and that prevented it from going into even more of a dangerous ride so this comes at a cost with obviously the six of brackets alaski bulldozing the 21 out of the way making contact with byron kyle bush denny hamlin christopher bell and alex bowman that's a lot of cars to be making contact with in the process of uh flipping over a race car now this is very interesting because we, we're going to look at this backstretch angle here we're going to look at this backstretch angle when he hits Denny Hamlin, Hamlin's car goes completely off the ground. All four tires are off it. This is very odd because we typically don't see this too often. Uh, where another car just makes contact and then all four tires just get up off the ground very easily. And Denny Hamlin somehow found a way to do that. Now we mentioned that the 21 gets hit by the 20 of Christopher Bell. It hit the 20. It, the 20 car hit the 21 in the left rear almost vice versa uh, for Mike Snyder's run when Mike Snyder had the 27th of Jeb Burton hitting him in the right rear as the 31 was in the wall which is what led to the car uh, getting up in the air this one completely different though because uh, Harrison Burton does not hit a wall he instead hits multiple race cars but Christopher Bell getting into the left rear of Harrison Burton is one of the main factors into how he flipped over the other one I'd have to say is the bottom of the next gen car. Now, when you see the car go up in the air, the bottom of it is completely different from the previous generations of race cars that we had. Uh, it's almost flat. It, it, it's, it's essentially flat. The bottom of the car is. Now, another thing that I can sort of compare this to are Indy cars, because Indy cars, the bottom of their cars are flat. Formula One, their cars are flat on the bottom as well. And in wrecks in the past, we've seen in IndyCar plenty of times where a car can easily get up in the air uh, just from being turned around. But when the 20 of Christopher Bell makes contact with the left rear of Harrison Burton in the 21, that car is up and in the air already. The rear tires are off the ground. And because of how flat the car is, uh, the bottom of the car, how flat it is, it just allows air to get underneath it. If there's just a little bit of contact where the rear tires are off the ground. And now we saw that there's this one thing I didn't really notice until I saw a super slow-mo replay of it, but the 20 of Christopher Bell also got in the air. His rear tires were off the ground, but his saving grace were the roof laps, because you see both of those roof laps are being deployed. In Harrison Burton's wreck, there's only one roof lap that's deployed, and I don't see both roof laps being deployed. Now, that could be another reason as to why that 21 car was able to get upside down, because if both roof laps were working, then that 21 car stays on the ground. There on the left, Christopher Bell in the 20. Both rear flaps are deployed as both rear tires are off the ground. His car stays on the ground, but because only one came up for Harrison Burton, and we don't see that second one come up until after the car is already barrel rolled. So there's a lot of combinations into how the 21 flipped, but it all it all came down to. Harrison Burton spinning and nearly getting hit by every car involved in the big one very early on in the Daytona 500 and one of them being the 20 of Christopher Bell hitting him in the left rear quarter panel and as he got hit it allowed air to get underneath that car because of how flat the next gen car is and the third and final reason as to how that car got upside down only one of the two roof flaps were deployed the other roof flap did not uh, come up until after the 21 already upside down so a lot of moving factors into how these crashes happen but when you get a perfect storm you're due for something bad to happen and we saw that happen uh twice within 24 hours with Mayan Snyder hitting the catch fence on the back stretch and then Harrison Burton 
flipping on the backstretch uh, the first one in the next gen car and that's going to do it here today if you guys did enjoy that video make sure you leave a like and subscribe comment for more and i'll catch you guys in the next video